Today, Gdansk is the Polish port metropolis on the Baltic Sea. About 1,000 years ago, the history of the once German-speaking free city of Danzig began. In 1945, the city was extensively destroyed, but rebuilt according to historical plans, photos and drawings. So was the big mill. The Catherine's Church, the oldest in the city, was the main parish church in the early days. A first building was constructed as early as in the 13th century, and after the Reformation, a new interior was built. Most of the valuable fixtures could still be stored securely before the destruction of the wall. Today, the church is administered by the Carmelite monks, who try to restore the old glory with donations. In the 14th century, the town received a stone fortification with imposing gates. The massive Story Tower, the High Gate from the Renaissance, and the Golden Gate. Several gates formed the western entrance to the old town, whereby the six-storey tower from the late Gothic period was also used as a prison. The way into the city leads through the long lane aligned with the magnificent houses of the merchants. One of these is the Obhagen House, an old townhouse of Gdansk. Inside you can see rooms with historical furnishings and get an idea of the wealth and splendour of the former bourgeoisie. The long lane opens into the long market with a magnificent building presiding on the corner. Pride and self-confidence were resoundingly expressed in the building of the town hall. Here, the city council and the mayor could discuss and represent, pass judgment and also dance. The Red Hall in particular is one of the most important interiors of the late Renaissance. Several outstanding Dutch artists were involved in its creation, Above all, Hans Vredeman de Vries. Another highlight is the fireplace, together with the city coat of arms. The town hall also houses the city museum, with valuable and exceptional exhibits of the town's history. Already in 1465, the tower was built from where the view of the old town with the St. Mary Church is enchanting. But from up here, it was also possible to overlook the city and a fire could be immediately reported. The entry of the Polish kings into the city took place via the magnificent Long Market. Here, the most distinguished houses lying both long sides. This also applies to the so-called Artus Court. The civil brotherhoods inspired by the legends of King Artus met here for their social gatherings. Each fraternity furnished their area with valuable furniture. Where the world's largest tiled stove from 1545, hanging ship models and wood carvings are among the most spectacular. Mm -hmm. 
objects and decorations with mythological, biblical and historical themes adorn the large hall vault, which is supported by four slender columns. Here the long market ends, and you enter the harbour through the Green Gate. Gdansk once became rich through amber, the gold of the Baltic Sea, that can still be found on the beaches today, but also as a commercial metropolis and hub of cultures. The inhabitants of the city were born into long-distance trade, and they sold the coveted amber as far away as the Arab lands. The fishing village became a town. Success aroused desires, but the Teutonic Order finally brought the city under its control, and in 1361, the membership in the Hanseatic League. At the end of the 14th century, Gdansk had grown to the largest and economically most successful town in the religious state, received city rights and became City of Rights, Glauno Miasto. From the Crane Gate, Brahma Zural, the famous women's lane, Mariaka, leads from the old port to the Church of Mary. The 52 townhouses here seem like a world of their own, with stone stairs, small terraces and cellar accesses. Art dealers and cafes have occupied the lowest apartments today as the stream of tourists has found its way here. Even the armory, the city arsenal, became a work of art, with a facade in the form of four interconnected townhouses. St Mary is the largest brick church of the European Middle Ages. But the Church of Mary also impresses with the richness of its interior. The white forest of columns and the ribbed ceilings may seem empty, but the altars and chapels house treasures of arts and crafts. Likewise, the high altar and the altar of Adrian, both world-famous winged altars, or the astronomic clock. From the high tower, which was raised to 78 metres after the liberation from the might of the Teutonic Order, there is a magnificent view. Gdansk has not only the old port on the Motlawa River, but also the biggest seaport in Poland. So it is understandable that there is much to learn in the shipping museum. High warehouses were built at the Motlawa and the ships brought merchandise from all over Europe. And in times of need, they supplied the Mediterranean countries with grain. Gdansk is the city of freedom, a veritable treasury of bourgeois culture. <laughs>